Hey, good morning and welcome back to our little journey in the book of Exodus. We're today at chapter 1, verses 15 to 17. The first opposition now is going to rise up against Pharaoh. Let's read these verses. Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra and the other was named Pua. And he said, when you are helping the Hebrew women to give birth and see them upon the birth stool, if it is a son, then you shall put him to death. But if it is a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt had commanded them, but let the boys live. Okay, so I want you to notice now there's some opposition. Pharaoh, the, the Hebrews are increasing, 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 and finally Pharaoh himself calls the midwives. And there's a big debate about, you know, was, this, was there only two midwives? Were these lead, ladies leading groups of midwives? And we don't have uh, ultimate answer to that. For the population that's there, you'd think there'd be more than two midwives, right? So, but these are apparently two of the leading ladies. We can at least say that. Pharaoh tells them, okay, here's the plan. Uh, when you see them, and when it says on the birth stools, you can also look, and there's also a question about that. It talks really about being the, about the two stones. This could actually also mean the testicle. The mother gives birth, and you see you see the testicles, the, the baby's testicles. You know it's uh, external uh, sex organs. You know it's a male. Kill it. You know, remember the command is that they're to be killed. And so the ladies are enlisted to kill all the male babies. And today, you know, we have doctors who... And we have this question about, you know, what what gender a, a child is. And uh, like the doctor wouldn't know. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you what, the, the Egyptians knew, they could tell. And the Hebrew midwives, they could know. And they actually chose that they would not, would not kill. And this was the first opposition to Pharaoh. The midwives are commanded by Pharaoh to do X. And the midwives instead fear God and do Y. They are not going to kill all the male Hebrew babies. Good for these ladies. This is a movement for freedom. And freedom really kind of begin, begins with little little people. And babies are about as little as you can get. So when we get into uh, infants and pregnant people, you've got to guard the rights of those extremely young ones because you are their protector. And so the Hebrew midwives are going to do that very thing. This is going to be defiance against Pharaoh. Good for these ladies. You know, this isn't laid out as starkly as some of the things like in the book of Daniel where, you know, it's like, O oh, king, you know, we will not bow down. Chapter 3, Daniel, we will not bow down to your idols. Uh, uh, let it be known to you. Uh, if you choose to, if, if, if we die, you know, if you kill us, we'll, we'll die, but we're not going to worship you instead of the true God. These Hebrew ladies are choosing the same thing. They are choosing to put their life at risk rather than to kill an infant, a newborn, or a preborn. So I want you to look at this and think about this. They're drawing a line in the sand. Pharaoh, and maybe this wasn't this command to the midwives, maybe he brought them in and this was kind of a quiet thing. Maybe he thought he could he could cause the midwives to do his dirty work for him and kind of just kill all the male babies and it wouldn't become quite as widely known. But it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So we'll see more as we go. But there is an opposition now to the opposition. Now God's people are saying, uh uh, no, just because the government says it doesn't mean that's what we're going to do. Just because Pharaoh has commanded it, it does not countermand God's command. So be good to your little tiny ones, because God regards you as their protector, just as he did the Hebrew midwife. See you tomorrow morning.